that that, that, that that helps to p- push me more. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> Gas me up down. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's a slap on the ass for me. <laughs> Let me all know. Let yeah. me all know. Another banger video. I mean, <laughs> y'all like my new intro. Yeah. <laughs> new intro now? This, this is kind of this rehearsed. Uh, well, I mean, we have a YouTuber, so I'm practicing, you know. <laughs> Don't try to make something. <laughs> okay, what, whatever. So, back again with another podcast episode, a special one at that. And we'll start with Leo. We're going to keep the special guest for that. Like All right, what's going on, everyone? <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's a new dance. Wow. What's going on, everyone? It's your girl, Leah Anise. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at It's Leah Anise. <laughs> Very good. And Mandisa with the dance. I'm doing good. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Mandisa. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter at Mandisa Fayola and Mandisa Smith on Facebook. Awesome sauce. And our special guest, our yeah. YouTuber, beauty guru, what else? Fitness, diva, like, yeah. girl, have all kinds of things going on. Marriage goals. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> goals all around. Uh-huh. <laughs> So, for the persons who live under a rock, could you please let them know where to find you? <laughs> True. Um, hi, everybody. So, I am Petit Sue Divinity. I am a YouTuber. I do beauty, which that is hair, makeup, mm-hmm. and, you know, I do challenges here and there. And then I have another YouTube channel that is dedicated to my daily lifestyle here living in Jamaica. Oh. Yes, 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 guys, she's awesome. Um, thank you. I just her vlog channel is my thing, like, I just oh. let it run. I just, and I my mommy, yeah, my, me and my mom is like, who has a new vlog? We sit down and we watch it together. We just so said. entertaining, yes, <laughs> we love I, it. Uh, she just put up one, um, a couple of days ago with the, the wild karaoke, yes. I was taking a break so that's why and you know what I'm working on some personal goals I'm trying to you know I really listen to my viewers so I'm trying to provide long vlogs because I know people like the long vlogs and I'm trying to do more so I'm really sitting down and thinking how I can improve myself I never ever think I reach you know I'm always trying to improve something so that's all that was and taking a breather as I said before <laughs> awesome. I mean it doesn't matter how long as long as it's always entertaining but <laughs> I get it I get it I do get it so um you know we have to ask a few questions about your journey because it is a great one and I will say that even though I'm not Jamaican we are all West Indian and you are a complete inspiration because it's like a Thank girl you. from a small small island like us you know yeah. she is big like we can do Aww. it too so congrats we have to give you your flowers while you're here but what inspired your YouTube journey well what inspired my YouTube journey was as I always say, sitting down in my office and just YouTube videos, beauty. I started out watching beauty and I never thought of it that serious. At first I was like, 
I watched it just for fun and then I say, you know, I should try this because at that time I didn't know how to do my makeup at all, at all. <laughs> and I first started to get like a few stuff, makeup stuff, and I started to practice. wasn't perfect, nowhere near perfect, but I said, you know what, I should just try and have a YouTube channel myself. I don't think anybody's going to watch it, but I'm going to do it. And mm-hmm. that comforted me because I was like, nobody now go watch it anyway. Let me just do the video. <laughs> And I went ahead, did it, and when I saw that I got 20 people, 20 people, because I at that time I was still in my 95, and I went to work, and I, I told somebody like, oh, you know, I have a YouTube channel now, and I do makeup tutorials as if I was a pro, and I was like, oh, all right, well. <laughs> and, you know, a couple of my friends are telling me, and I'm like, oh, all right, I'll subscribe, but nobody never took it that serious, they subscribed though, and when I saw that I went to 20 subscribers, I was so grateful, and then I started to really really take my time and watch videos now and I was like you know if I can get 20 subscribers that means that I can get 100 and I took my little time I started to practice more and for me when I start something I don't start and stop easily so I'm like no I'm gonna start it I'm gonna continue so I'm going to be consistent so I'm going to upload at least once a week because I used to like like hear the little advice a lot of youtubers will say you'll be consistent if you want to grow and i just followed those right. little tricks and that's how it started and from there it grew right nice. wow who would have thought, yeah. who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> and i thought she's like keeping humble she's like let's take it yeah back. she's super humble isn't she? <laughs> i love that i love that yeah that's yeah. yeah that's major important that's major important Mm-hmm. Yes, um, very. So, would you say that? How do I want to put it? Was it was it like a decision that you sat down and made when you kind of transitioned less from makeup but more to doing wigs, or did it just naturally come in with like people sending wigs and stuff? Okay, so I used to watch hair videos too, but. I, Initially, it was more makeup. And then after that, I started to see more recommendations with hair videos. I, before getting any wig or bundles or anything like that, I'm somebody, before starting a YouTube channel, I change my hairstyle every single week from a, being going to school because my mom was actually a hairstylist. So okay. I, my mother, my father, my father, my father, he's very particular about his haircut and his eyebrows. <laughs> wow. But very particular, he's very masculine, but like mm-hmm. he's very particular about his eyebrows and his hair. It has to be patted, it's faded and patted in a certain way. Right. Um, <laughs> it's like, never, ever, ever go on the road with her hair looking any sort of way. It's always neat. So I feel like I kind of got that from them. So I feel like with the way I used to like do my hairstyles or whatever, it probably attracted my first deal. And my, I don't remember the name of the first company, but um, when they reached out to me, I was shocked because I believe I was probably like at 2000 subscribers. I was like me really, (laughs) but I was like, wow, thank you. And I did my best with it. I was flattered and that's how it started. And I actually just, with hair, I just genuinely love changing my look because I get bored of one look very easily. It's fun. Okay. You yeah. don't have like a, a favorite um look that you like always go she to does. no matter what? Curly hair, curly, curly. <laughs> no, it's yeah, easy it and it's pretty. <laughs> yes. yes, it's a win. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I mean, you did, you, yeah, your sister did mention that on the, the video you did with her and your mom. Mom. That was, that was really cute. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. So, for somebody, uh, up and coming YouTuber who's interested in doing beauty, would you recommend reaching out to beauty brands then, or just trying to attract them? You see me now. Me personally, I'm a very shy person. And a lot of people would believe that because I do YouTube and I grew and I still manage to maintain a certain level of confidence with the audience. But I was always scared of reaching out to somebody and then they don't respond. And I must admit, I have... Projection. Yes. 
it's what you oh, yeah. conquer your fears, you know, mm-hmm. it's very important. I have reached out and I got through with some, it's not a lot that I've ever reached out to, but I must say, go for it. If your heart is telling you to do it, just be professional in your approach and respectful and just hope for the best. It don't must always work out, but if it doesn't work out, try again. It can't make that, you know, stop you from trying because it can, uh, that just made the feeling of getting rejected. <laughs> yeah, it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. Okay, yeah. so, um, you know, you have a lot of followers. You have like, is it over half a million on your beauty channel like- and then you're going to 100K on your vlog channel because I'm right there with you. I'm keeping the count too. <laughs> try to get us at 100k um yeah. a lot of women on youtube are into beauty and well i should say the bigger youtubers are with beauty so do you feel like it's harder for females to build an audience outside of beauty as it would be for men who could probably just put up a prime for something and get a lot of people going you're asking if it's harder to build a brand outside of beauty um with yeah one no, the possibilities are endless right now with YouTube. I see a lot of people. I see people just sit down and tell a story and people love them. Right. So you just have to be unique. You could be doing the right. same thing as me, but the way that you deliver it is so different and the audience right. love that variety. So I feel like anybody can actually give it a try, even if you're going to show how to make a book it's just the way that you deliver the content or you know so it's all about you as a person yeah that's that's interesting um because you know as females we tend to we tend to want to get into almost i guess you could say almost a male dominating industry so it's like when you step into it how do you step into it without having um not not being authentic but how do you step into it like for instance you have a lot of females that may want to do comedy right but they kind of stem off to comedy because they realize they're not getting the views or they're not getting what they want to get so they kind of stem off into more i guess you could say sexual um you know doing more uh, doing more like for that, I think that's where she was coming from too. Like, how how are you able to keep on that straight and narrow, like, um, and for not right. to hmm? yeah. yeah, that can be a difficult one, especially when you don't feel like the people are for what you truly love. Right. But personally, I <laughs> I've experienced so many like different like okay so what the people might be seeing they might be thinking sometimes that oh it's not working out in our favor but they don't understand what's happening on the back end so it all depends on you as a person but to answer your specific question I I don't want to tell you to go and do something that you think people would rather see you do and not stay true to yourself okay I'm not going to tell you to do that I'm going to tell you to continue doing the comedy if that's what you truly love Trust me, believe in yourself, work on your content, work on your craft, you will get there. Managa tell us a good do oh be half naked and do sexual stuff because that what that's what they want to see. Right. That is not you. Or be half so, naked and do comedy. Because they want <laughs> them in, you know, see some titties and then you know t- telling a joke. <laughs> what? Manika? Roots. you know don't lose the roots and just be for the people and not for yourself you lose it that's how you lose yourself right. that's really right. yourself. Mm-hmm. i know when i know when a lot of um well not a lot but i know when some influencers um you know they get um uh, they grow a bigger following um it's kind of hard sometimes to balance personal life and work life how has that been for you well for me okay so personal life work life honestly sometimes it gets really challenging because I'm constantly working 
because okay i have goals i write down my goals actually and i have time frames i have deadlines personal deadlines that i want to meet and so what i'll do is i make a schedule so if i know that i'm going to just have to film every day for this week i do that and then i know that probably next week no three days out of the week i can just chill out or i can just have that entire week off on myself because you have to have strategy if you don't have strategy then it's going to be a mess so that's how you have your balance out everything you have to document it sit down and think to yourself logically how it's going to work and find structure and that's why it's important to do something that you love too Cause I can't, yeah. I mean, like imagine having like a full work schedule like that and you, it, you, you're doing something that you hate, you know what I'm saying? So. Because like for me, I just did two hair videos. I had on another wig before this. Oh no, I saw it. That was two hours ago. You just dropped that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That was filmed the day before yesterday. Oh crap. <laughs> what I just, not yet live. So. I, I, I told myself that you're, you're, you're doing two videos today and you have the podcast immediately after. You have to work on time and do it properly. Right. So that, for example, that's how I go about my work. And then I know that, okay, so after by say three, well, when I'm done with the podcast, I go straight into editing. Mm -hmm. And after I'm done with editing, my work is done for the day. And that can be like by say seven o'clock, 7.30. After that, I chill out. Oh, I chill okay. out rest yes <laughs> awesome so you're like your own little manager in your head mm -hmm. <laughs> no one cares mm -mm. that's true mm -hmm. that's true so, so oh, go ahead Bri. go back go you go you was first no. <laughs> <laughs> so i i see that you're married yeah big ups uh Thank you. i recently got married oh, and Thank you. <laughs> so I wanted to definitely ask you, like, you know, well, Leah kind of asked you it. How do you balance? But how does your husband feel about this time, like this strategy? Because once you've done, once you've done this work, once you've editing, now you have to go and be a wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that work for you? And how does that work for him? How does he feel, you know, with, with all of this going on? Yeah, well, he's always 100% supportive and he has his work doing too because he has a lot of work. Okay. Maybe. So you wouldn't know that end of it. So we're both, so we're busy. Like for me, I know that we speak right throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So sometimes even when I might be filming, I take breaks in between. We check up on each other oh. and then, I continue what I'm doing but like after I'm done we definitely talk like because that's how you maintain that personal aspect and your marriage you know mm -hmm. it's a very communication nice mm -hmm. well that's good he's very yeah. supportive in that aspect because you just you have a lot of people or you may have some people that the husbands or their spouses aren't really I guess into what we're into you know we're creative yeah so but he's yeah he actually find it intriguing because he he likes the switch up of the looks. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think should. I noticed, I noticed from this, the Fenty one. Oh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> I, was, I, was, oh, you. I was saying I noticed he like how you switch up the looks from the Savage Fenty Valentine's one. And like, oh, and he stopped. And I was like, this one about to rape this woman on this. That helps to push me more. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> Ask me up down. Okay. okay. It was yeah. a slap on the ass for me. <laughs> Let me all know. Let me all know. Right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so in your um career has there ever been a time when you were asked to maybe model or advertise something that was out of your brand that you had to turn down that you weren't comfortable with kind of harping on what Mandy was said about you know sometimes people may want to over sexualize women definitely has there, yeah yeah mm -hmm. what was Why? that experience like <laughs> I mean, I was 
wasn't shocked, you know, because somebody that I sometimes I if you check my Instagram, I wear bikinis. I'm into fitness. I show off my mm-hmm. body. You know, um, I wasn't surprised, but it doesn't I don't go that sexual with my brand. So right. it honestly wouldn't really work out for me. But yes, I, I just dealt with it professionally. Let them know that, you know, it doesn't really go with me at the, at this time or it just do, doesn't go at all. So, yeah, um, I just turn it down. There's no other way mm-hmm. to go around, you know, because as I say, I'm not going to lose myself. That's not how I want to put myself out there to the public, you know? Yeah. yeah. So ladies, you heard that? Um, if it comes up, you can turn it down and still be successful. You know, okay. No, you can't say yes <laughs> to everything. You have to have yeah. boundaries. Definitely. Because some people, I th- okay, sometimes when money is involved too, like, yeah. oh, forget all their standards. The boundaries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they forget oh, yeah. all their standards. And in 2021, listen everybody's about the bag okay the yeah. bag. <laughs> i kind of got stolen from us last year so i understand but you can't lose yourself no <laughs> oh yeah yeah you have to think about those stuff before you make decisions like that yeah so i know you show a good percentage of your life because i know it's about all of your life in your vlog but yeah. is there something like is there like a daily routine or ritual or something that you do to get your day started or go throughout your day that you don't see on camera uh well I talk to God that I never show that on camera that is something Mm -hmm. that like first thing when I wake up sometimes I do it when I'm driving a lot of the times I do it when I'm driving by myself and it's long conversations like it will be for the entire trip until I reach to the gym or the entire time while I'm in my room straightening up that is a daily ritual for me mm-hmm. honestly something that I never document yes. and I, I know why keep it to yeah. yourself yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I think the question that a lot of people may have always asked you is how do you deal with negative comments I block it I block it. Just period. <laughs> Straight to the point. <laughs> no time. <laughs> okay. Summary. <laughs> no. Some people are just miserable and they want you to be miserable with them. And I get that, but that's not going to happen today. I mean, to be honest, so everybody's not the same and it's easier said than done. Sometimes you see that negativity coming at you and it, it, it really dampens your spirit. But you have to get up and keep on going because a lot of people come to me about that and they really want a realistic response. I have seen negative, I have gotten negative comments and I'm like, really? Like, what am I going <laughs> to still block it and I'm like, my thing, because sometimes, you know, something might sound really harsh, but you have to look into yourself and evaluate yourself and see if there was some truth in it. Right. And see... I say, all right, you know what? Because I know everybody know some people are not going to put filter on what they say or whatever. They're just to the point and mean with it. But you know, just look look and see if there's something wrong with you at the same time or with what you're doing. But internet, the internet can be so miserable sometimes. But as I say, block it, block it, and continue with the day. <laughs> That's your summary right there. Block it. <laughs> um, Block it. There, there Don't stay are, Well, I know that to a lot of people, you are living the life. Um, and <laughs> I mean, I know, I know you might not be exactly where you where you would want to be, but for many That's- people, you know, being able to um, make money and have a huge following and, you know, just live off of being creative. That's yeah. a dream of theirs. Um, so I want to, I want to ask you like, what, what would you say to those that are in a nine to five or in a career that they, that they're not pleased in, that's not fulfilling them and they want to branch out and they want to take that big step, but they don't know how to. I think they should like, don't just cut it off definitely like work on yourself work on what you truly want to do make sure so you have it luck find a way where you can at least get a income and cut it off stop it don't have a plan b 
when you have so say for instance you want to do here but you're in a nine to five and you're really just unhappy with working there make sure that your craft is up to par probably start doing one on two taking one on two appointments on the weekends start getting an extra stream of income and get your name out there and when you feel like you're comfortable enough to just branch out sometimes don't wait for the perfect moment but when you feel like you're comfortable enough to branch out resign and don't have a plan b that's what i did that's what i did and i never looked back when i took my leaving um um interview they asked me if i would ever come back and i told them no i told them no and she was like you sure you want wow. to put i'm like yes i'm so sure <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I live to see the same people reaching back out to me to host a whole conference. Oh, to wow. educate. Wow. You- I had some really sad days working there, so I never looked back. And I listened to a lot of motivational um, speakers, and that's one thing I took from some of them not having a plan B because sometimes when you have a plan B, you don't go full on in your plan A, you know? Yeah. That is true. That is true. Yeah, that is true. That's interesting. You never really think of it like that. You always think, oh, you got to have a plan B because mm-hmm. you may fall, mm-hmm. you may mm-hmm. fail. Yeah. So. That's why I consider yeah. failure when that's something that you want to do. So Right. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Well, I know yeah. that. I know that for sure. That's one thing. Yeah. Okay. I could put that in my notebook. No, it's not. <laughs> I, growing up, we felt hard times. So I know what that feel like. I might not look like it. People people don't understand. Like, I'm not going to tap into that really. But when I shared the story about my father on my YouTube, I won't get into that right now. But when I share that, um, I, I know what it feels like to be really low. So... Mm-hmm. I kind of approach things. I'm not going to say I don't get fearful at times, but I approach things like in a way where I know that I can't look back. When I do this, there is no turning back. So no plan Bs, just the plan A. I like that. I like that. So has there ever been a collaboration, um, whether on YouTube or with brands, where you were like, I'm not working with these people no more. A couple. <laughs> <laughs> I think the better question is, have they reached out to you and you had to find a way to kind of turn them not- down? No. Um, so they knew that it was bad too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That happened like probably twice. And I didn't go through with it the second time because you disrespected me the- so it's not going to happen a second time. <laughs> so I just oh, let yeah. in a really nice way that, you know, I will not go through it at this with it at this point in time because such and such happened. I did not. And I, I don't know. Sometimes companies can be, some companies can be nonchalant. And I guess they don't really, because there's so many influencers out there. They don't feel like you have any values. As I, I brought up the point earlier about money, they just feel like once they mention money, you go crazy and you don't care about anything else. You just take any amount of crap from them because you're getting paid, you know? But that's not me. You know, I give respect. You expect respect. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So have you ever thought about, about taking critique to divinity outside of Jamaica? Definitely. <laughs> that's on the vision board <laughs> mm-hmm. so a place to go oh, future plans don't want to jinx it mm. okay yeah i got you i got you i got you i got you i mean with what the time we're living in this pandemic and such throw off a lot of stuff so you know when things happen they just happen right you just work on yourself and keep things on the low until it happens. Mm. Speaking mm-hmm. of the pandemic, um, how has that 
affected your brand and the, you know, the way you do work and, you know, the way you create content now? Uh, well, I can say for beauty, it was not bad. It was not bad because a lot of companies, I guess, probably panicked a little in the initial part of it. So they had to get creative and they needed people to promote what they were trying to get creative with. Mm -hmm. So influencers would get probably, you know, more deals than before. So I believe that's one reason why a lot of people is now like turning to YouTube because they're like, this is actually a good avenue in a time like this, mm -hmm. you know? So helped in that aspect it, as it relates to like my blog channel now where it's my daily life I had to get creative in the house because there was really nowhere to go especially in the lockdown period so you know that part was kind of rough there was a point where no restaurants were open parks are locked no events are happening you know but you have to go around it and get creative so that's what I did stay home cook have joke work out listen music <laughs> that's what we do best <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so speaking of your vlog channel I know like you said your beauty channel that's that's your your you your brand brother so it's always going to be consistent content there and not that your vlog channel isn't consistent but I know you may take a few breaks here and there was there any time that you felt like I just need to put this vlog channel down like I'll just stick to the beauty channel no, sometimes <laughs> I'm doing a beauty video and I kind of, I have to follow up a certain structure based on what the company wants. With my vlog channel, it's just me. And I have a lot of fun editing those videos because I'm laughing while I'm editing them. It's <laughs> like, it eases my mind. It doesn't feel, it's, it's not so structured. It's structured, but it's, if you get what I mean, like I'm not doing yeah. it for, just for me it's just for laughs it's just for a good little vibe so never I, I never ever thought I would stop I was gonna ever stop my vlog channel or vlogging no listen <laughs> YouTube is such a weird place sometimes man because it's funny how I see you know what let's continue, let's continue. <laughs> but I know because I, the I, thing I, is no, no, so YouTube, wait it's YouTube like flag the video or something that no, no, YouTube never flag it. It was just, it was just uh, something with the viewers. Mm, and, okay. You know, it was just with somebody that was in the video at the time. Ah. But yeah, that's what happened with that video. So. Wow. That is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sue, I do thank you for joining us. Um, oh, I, I think. Yeah, girl. I mean, you know, if you want to, you can, we always sound to drink and talk. We ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> We're here. We're here. <laughs> but we yeah. do want to thank you I, for joining us. Going out with ourselves for wine glass and everything. She having a Yeah. Glass. I think um, Leah and Nadisa will agree with me. Our final question is just going to be, when are you coming over? Right. <laughs> when are you coming to the Bahamas? I've been there before. <laughs> it was so beautiful. I went to Nassau. Welcome, you ain't call us. All right, why didn't you call us? Or <laughs> even I started YouTube, but I didn't have a vlog channel as yet. Oh. And it was so beautiful. And I want to go back. I genuinely want. It's actually at the top of my list with other Caribbean islands that I will return to. Oh, but when I'm going to have it. <laughs> <laughs> see now you have three friends you can link up with <laughs> you have a gangster in the crew what? <laughs> you got someone who's a talk Leah I'm talking about you who's the gangster <laughs> right please clarify <laughs> listen Sue Sue listen to gangster music you know you ever watch I know she's she no. <laughs> she likes to listen. She likes to listen to gangster. She's dance hall. Dance, dance hall, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Just the> vibes. <laughs> no, no limits. No limits. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but definitely come down, girl. You wait, not. 
All right. <laughs> thank you. But thank you. Thank you once again for mm -hmm. coming and sitting and chatting with us. Hopefully, <laughs> maybe some time in the future when Corona behaves, we can do this in person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be beautiful. <laughs> and it'll be much more longer. So yeah. I want to thank the viewers also for tuning in and listening in. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so. And check out. Right. Like, what are you doing? Comment, like, share, subscribe. So, so you can see Sue. You know, you never know when she's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to check out Sue. Check out her vlogs and check out her beauty channel, Keep to Divinity. Guys, it's entertaining. Because nobody Very watches TV anymore. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So be sure to follow us and subscribe at Big Talks Podcast on every social media platform. And thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the, welcome to the Big Talks.